to the chase um, if you are new to the game and let's face it these guides are aimed at people who are new to the game then it probably wouldn't be the greatest idea you've ever had to just jump straight in and uh, you know, head to Thargoid space and go after uh, uh, you know Thargoid ships because well, okay, a Sargoid combat does tend to be, uh, yeah, go from one extreme to the other. Um, if you limit yourself to going after Sargoid scouts, for the most part, you should be okay. But if you are going after Sargoid interceptors, it's a totally different matter. Um... But I'll cover interceptors uh, a bit later on. This is going to be in two parts. Um, but only one video. <coughs> so let's jump straight in with part one. Yeah, uh, Thargoid Scouts. Now... Thargoid Scouts recently, or at least this is how it looked uh, to me, recently had a bit of a buff. Um, the ships themselves are, are no stronger. They take damage at exactly the same rate as before. But their attacks are now more powerful. Uh, their regular shots do more damage to your shields. And a slightly higher percentage of that uh, of their shots bleed through the shields and uh, damage the hull. Also, they use their corrosive missiles more than they used to, and the corrosive effect uh, seems to work a bit faster. Not a huge amount, but it is noticeable. And as a, a result, my old. Uh, Thargoid attack, or yeah, my old Thargoid scout attack ship, my old Vulture, was no longer cutting it. So that has gone and it's been replaced with uh, this Alliance Chieftain. Um, so, well, let's uh, have a, a look at the uh, loadout of this. So we'll start from the bottom and work up. Actually, we'll start with the core internals. Um, no big surprises as far as the core internals go. So, military grade uh, composite bulkheads which have been modded with yeah, grey 5, heavy duty armour and deep plating. Um, when it comes to modding uh, either the bulkheads or whole reinforcement packages. This is the only uh, armor uh, modding that you should even be looking at. No others. Um, heavy duty, as high as you can, and deep plating. Uh, uh, yeah, deep plating experimental. The reason being that uh, Thargoid um, attacks only deal uh, absolute damage it's not kinetic not thermal not explosive so your resistances to those three uh, damage types are totally pointless you just want to go for sheer health and that applies to both uh, armor and shields uh, so yeah so that's me me military grade composites um the rest of the uh, core internals are pretty much business as usual. Um, so power plant, overcharge to grade 5. I think actually that's a bit over the top. I think I can get away with just grade 4. <coughs> and thermal spread. If you're going after scouts, it's certainly handy to keep your heat down. So, uh, yeah, thermal spread experimental there. Thrusters, 
Yeah, uh, dirty drive uh, tuning and uh, drag drives, but in uh, anti thyroid ships, if ever there was a time to consider clean drive tuning, this is it. Because with clean drive tuning, your thermal load is actually decreased. And uh, that, yeah, is pretty handy. Um, but I didn't do that anyway, so. French drive, uh, modding this really isn't very important. Well, certainly not for me. Um, the system I'm in at the moment is where this ship stays. doesn't go anywhere else. So, but nevertheless, increased range with Mass Manager. No surprises there. Life support is lightweight to just, you know, improve um, speed and manoeuvrability uh, a touch. Um, if you're going after scouts, this is fine. If you're going after interceptors, I would not fit this uh, mod. But uh, we'll come to that when uh, we cover interceptors. Distributor, again, no surprise. Weapon focus, grade 5 with super conduits. And then finally the sensors. Uh, lightweight scanner to grade 5. Normally if I've got um, uh, sensors that are only class 4 and therefore they're relatively light uh, I would fit long range but when you're going up against Thargoids long range is an absolute waste of time because they're never that far away from you so you really don't need it. So that is uh, core internal so optional internal again uh, so, uh, I've got 6A Prismatic Shield Generator. Um, frankly, Prismatic Shields, if you're going after Thargoid Scouts, is totally unnecessary. The only reason I am using it is because this ship was originally outfitted to uh, take on uh, Interceptors. And I've changed it, so I just thought, oh, fuck it, I'll keep the uh, Prismatic Shield Generator. So yeah, I did, um, but really standard, uh, you know, A-rated shield generator is fine. So this has reinforced shields with high cap. Again, you just want the, the sheer um, shield strength resistance is not important. Uh, shield cell bank, you won't really need these too often, but there will be times when you do need them. So, uh, yeah, specialised uh, shield cell bank, uh, the grade 4 with boss cells. Now I've got a uh, corrosion resistant cargo rack. Uh, you don't have to have corrosion resistant. I'm just in the habit now where if I need uh, or I have space for a class 4 uh, cargo rack, I always fit corrosion resistant. Um, because, why not? Uh, the four, uh, three rather, military uh, compartments, which are all class four, they all have 4D Guardian Shield uh, reinforcement packages. Um, can't mod those, so yep, they are what they are. Then a class two hole reinforcement package, which again, heavy duty with deep plating. I then have a Guardian hole reinforcement package. Uh, you can't mod that obviously, but it does provide caustic resistance. There's me saying resistance is a fucking pointless because I forgot all about the caustic resistance. Having some caustic resistance is quite handy. You don't need to go mad with it. Um, so just this one Guardian Hull reinforcement package is going to provide me plenty. Um, class 1 decontamination limpet controller, which is why I have the... Uh, Cargo racks. Um, decontamination limit controller is now, I would say, essential if you're going after scouts. Uh, so, yep, get one of those fitted. Then with the uh, sleep mounts, so I've got uh, uh, the Xeno scanner so I can see, you know, how much damage I've done to. Uh, 
the uh, scouts without this you can't see how much you've done uh, and then uh, the heatsink launcher which has been modded to give me the uh, additional ammo capacity and then two shield boosters which have both been modded to yep heavy duty with super capacitors experimental uh, before I go into the weapons we'll uh, show you what that uh, those mods do. Uh, shield health then is 1,793. Resistance is, as I say, they don't matter. Uh, and armor health 1,984. And that has 5% caustic resistance. That's the only resistance you need to worry about. The others, again, don't matter at all. And going after scouts, that's more than fine. So then finally the hard points, so I have two class 3 uh, gimbal beam lasers. With scouts, gimbal weapons are fine because scouts don't use chaff, so they're never going to throw your gimbaled uh, weapons off target. You can even use <coughs> uh, turrets if you really must. So uh, both uh, beam lasers have grade 5 efficient weapon with thermal vent experimental. And then I have four multi cannons, one class two, three class ones, and they all have high capacity magazine up to grade four with uh, oversized experimental just to give that little bit of extra uh, damage. I went high capacity magazine because I want them to last uh, a decent amount of time. Uh, I didn't bother going up to grade 5 because grade 5 high capacity magazine means you're using an awful lot of uh, the military supercapacitors uh, material, which is the second rarest material in the game. Um, you're probably going to be using somewhere in the region of 6 or 7 of those to, uh, you know, if you, if you really want to max out uh, the grade 5, 6 or 7 each. And I've got four multi cannons. Uh, and also, I'm not going to be using this ship very often because this is all this ship does is just go after Thargoid scouts. So I just figured it wasn't worth it. So I just went with grade four, which is still going to improve, you know, and still has improved. Um, now, the ammo count, it's gone up from uh, 2100 max ammo to 3848. And the clip size has gone up from 90 to 166. So, yeah, it's it's made more than enough of a difference. So that's the uh, loadout. But where are we? Well, we are in a system which is currently blank. Because, uh, yeah, all my visited systems are currently... Uh, deselected. But yeah, we are here in the Asterophy system. If you're going after Thargoids, there are three places you, you need to uh, head to. This is uh, the Pleiades Nebula. Um, this is probably the best place to come if you're going after uh, Thargoids. It's not a huge distance away from the populated zone. If we uh, take a look at where Sol is in relation to us. There we go, so Sol is 371.92 light years away. It, it's, it's not too bad. And uh, yeah, the Pleiades region, there's a huge amount of Thargoids around here. So uh, yeah, this is a good place uh, to come. In fact, I'd say it's the best place to come. Which is why I have this ship uh, stored here. The second place is uh, the Witch Head Nebula, which you can just see in the background here. You can also see I've got three ships stored out there. Uh, I'm just going to bring up engineers so that I can uh, see how far away they are. Because, yeah, this is where this engineer is and she is in and around uh, the Witch Head Nebula. So this is 618 light years away from where I am at the moment in uh, Pleiades, let alone from the rest of uh, the uh, populated zone. So it is a fair old way out, 
and yeah, uh, you'll certainly uh, encounter Sargoids around here, but nowhere near as many as you do in Playa these. So um, yeah, Playa these is, is still definitely uh, the place to come, really. Um, the third place is up here. Uh, coal sacks. This has only recently sort of started becoming uh, a bit of a Thargoid hotspot. I've not been there since the whole uh, Thargoid thing started. I went there, uh, was it around Halloween time when that ghost ship uh, showed up and uh, I was following uh, the course and seeing where it had been. So I've been out there recently and, and yeah, there are Thargoid barnacles out there. But uh, I'm pretty sure there are Thargoid ships around there as well, but I don't know how many. Um, someone else will need to uh, fill you in on that one. But I very much doubt it is as uh, as good a place as uh, uh, Pleiades. So really, yeah, if, you, if you're going after Thargoids, Pleiades Nebula is the place to go. Now this particular system, uh, Asterapy that we're in, you can see there's three stars here and no planets. Unfortunately, the place is also absolutely fucking chock full of uh, fleet carriers. Um, so yeah, you have yeah the primary, secondary, tertiary star. You have one docking station and that is it. But it does mean that uh, if you find non-human signal sources, you're going to have, you know, you'll be at that signal source in next to no time, providing it's not around um, uh, B or C star. But you have no reason to go to those two anyway, just hang around A. You'll find the signal sources alright. So that's what we are going to be doing. Um, the one last thing before we head out uh, in the infantry, yeah, uh, don't forget your limpets you will need them um, for the decontamination. Also on the navigation tab, yeah, I've uh, got the uh, fleet carriers filtered out because otherwise the, yeah, the place is so full of them you'll just have this endless stream of carriers while you're trying to find anything. Right, anyway, let's launch and uh, take on a few scouts. So as soon as you went to uh, Super Cruise, kill your speed, you don't want to be going too far. And uh, you want to, well, you've got options now. You can either head to the nav beacon, scan that, and then all of the uh, unidentified signal sources will be identified and you'll know what's there. Trouble is, um, non-human signal sources don't last as long as uh, regular ones. And also, uh, in, in this system, you have new signal sources cropping up very, very regularly and very, very quickly. And as a result, um, it doesn't take long at all for the uh, signal sources that were identified through the nav beacon to become out of date. And they'll all be mixed in with new unidentified ones. So I find it better to bring up the FSS scanner get an initial reading and then go through each of them manually. You'll notice that you've got basically like two big clumps of uh, signals here. Now the one to the left, um, that will be all human signal sources, so things like, you know, uh, encoded uh, transmissions and uh, 
convoy beacons and you know all that sort of guff you know the one here that's a bit more uh, to the right of it they will all be non-human so if you have that one uh, selected you know that the signal source you're going to be looking at will be a, a non-human one so this is a threat 5 it's also 150,000 light uh, seconds away so I'm not going to be going to that you'll see there's a big old cluster of these signals around the uh, B and C stars but they're all far too far away so you want to ignore them and look at these ones closer so this is a threat 7 what we want is a threat 3 or a threat 4 because those are guaranteed to be scouts. You will get scouts in threats 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 but they will almost certainly also be joined by uh, interceptors. Anyway, uh, this one I've just found here is a threat 4 so we've got that targeted. So let's now head to there. Get the uh, power distributor set. In we go. Now uh, one Viper and one Cobra. Right, this means this is going to be the most difficult uh, threat for the lot. There will be seven uh, in, uh, scouts that show up. If you ever arrive at uh, a non-human threat 4 and you find a Cobra Mark 3 and a Viper Mark 3, you know that is what's going to uh, show up. Here they are, all seven of them. Also, these seven um, ships will include some of the uh, other variants and you will definitely want to prioritise those variants. The Marauder is the standard one, that's the ship you'll find all the time. The Regenerator here, as the name suggests, will regenerate and uh, repair other Thargoid Scouts in the area. So you will definitely want to make these the priority, these are the ones you want to get rid of first. Then there is the Berserker, and when the Berserker will uh, incite other scout ships to fire their caustic missiles. Alright, so that's that uh, regenerator down, but there is another one. There aren't any berserkers here, which is quite handy. The inciters will incite um, the scouts to fire their regular uh, weapons uh, faster. So that's uh, one of them uh, inciting, but it's just a regenerator. Now, at the moment, there aren't any other ships in the area that have been damaged, so he's not really doing anything. Regenerators can um, repair other scouts, but they can't repair themselves, so that's him down. Alright, Sighter. Now, when you destroy a scout, uh, when they explode, they release uh, a toxic cloud, which you have to avoid. If you fly through it, you'll pick up corrosive damage just as... Uh, if you've been hit by a uh, corrosive missile, so you certainly don't want to be doing that. It also means that it's a good idea to perhaps yeah, let them stay a reasonable distance away from you when um, you're about to finish them off. And that's another reason why having the Xeno scanner is so useful, because you can see when that is going to be. Otherwise, I mean, they have no shields, their hulls aren't particularly strong, so they are pretty easy to take out. It's just their uh, shots and the uh, potential corrosive damage that you may take. These, that's what makes them tricky. And you can see also, my shields are taking a bit of a pound here, so much so that I'm going to uh, use a shield cell bank. Certainly no danger of uh, overheating at the moment. Right, so there's two left. That's 
zoom down. The last one. Job done. So, going up against seven of them, that is the most difficult. They do drop materials. You've got plenty of them here. I'm maxed out on all of those, so there's no point me uh, checking them. But, uh, yeah, if you're after uh, five wide materials, there you go. Alright, so once again, as soon as we uh, enter Super Cruise, kill your speed. And now uh, let's see what we've got next. Throw it four, there we go. Saw. It was 50 light seconds away, but because there are no planets in this system, there are no like gravity wells to affect you, so you're always going to get there in no time at all. I mean, a lot of time, even if there's only 30 seconds left on the uh, signal source that you found, there's still plenty of time for you to get there before uh, it disappears. <coughs> in, this time it's a more standard one, there's four of them, they're all just going to be marauders, so you don't need to worry about um, any of the other variants, so you just go in there, and basically beat the fuck out of the little cunts. Now Frontier Developments recently did some sort of uh, rebalancing. Uh, as far as things like payouts go. And Thargoid Scouts, which used to pay 10,000 a time, now pay 40,000 a time. Get away from that gun. Uh, but, um, they no longer contribute quite as much to your uh, combat rank progression as they used to. They still contribute more towards it than regular ships. It's just not quite as much as they used to. Um, it's still uh, a great uh, choice to go after if you want to try and get your uh, ranking, uh, you know, improved quickly. And as you can see, I mean, they're really not that much of a threat. The only time they are going to be a real problem is well, if you get, say, two or three of those uh, signal sources where several of them crop up, then they can give your shields a real pasting. And also, if they use their um, corrosive missiles, or if you fly through their corrosive cloud, um, yeah, and then your whole damage goes down pretty quick. And if you don't have decontamination limpets, where do you take decontamination damage? There is a way of uh, burning off uh, that um, corrosive damage. Which I will show later because when I go up against interceptors, I do that myself. But it does mean you will take more internal damage 
and against scouts no point you might as well bring some decontamination limpets and uh, be able to get rid of it you know more safely oh that's way too far away okay All right, doesn't seem to be a huge amount of them around the uh, primary star, so let's take a look. That's a five. Trying to find... Yeah, when you get an awful lot of them, they... Uh, they make the FSS movement quite uh, stuttery, not very... Uh, smooth or anything like that. Anyway, so this is a threat three. There will only be two here. But it's very likely that one of them will be one of the uh, variants. It won't just be two standard marauders. Doesn't happen every time, but more often than not, yeah, there, one of them will be a variant. So let's see if this is one of those. If you want to play it ultra cautiously, especially if it's your, your first time taking on uh, any Thargoid ships, you may want to limit yourself to just doing uh, Threat 3s. I mean, you'll still get 80,000 combat bonds as a result, so, you know, it's not like it's completely pointless. Alright, so that one's a uh, Marauder. This one is a Berserker, right, so that's the variant. We'll go after him. Hopefully we can take him out before... No. There we go. He's incited it. The other ones have launched a caustic missile, so we are now taking caustic damage. Now the thing is, because we now have caustic damage, it doesn't matter about flying through the corrosive cloud. We've already got that caustic damage. So we can... Um, we don't have to take the evasive uh, action. As I demonstrated a bit too well there. Didn't mean to be practically fly into the fucking thing. Now you need to destroy all of the uh, scouts before you use your uh, decontamination limpet, otherwise, they will just target it straight away and destroy it. So they are down. Let's uh, get the uh, decontamination limpet out. There it is, doing its thing. There we go, so caustic substance neutralised. We're at 90% hull. It does do a little bit of repair work, not much. Chances are this will stay at 90. No, it did go up to 91. So there we go, so it's as simple as that when it comes to uh, you know, getting rid of the uh, caustic damage there. Or at least it's as simple as that if you have a decontamination limpet controller and uh, some uh, limpets with you. So I think uh, we'll have a look for one more and then I think that will do for this uh, demonstration. I mean I think the point has very much been made. Um, Targoid scouts are not that difficult. Although it is still a good idea, in fact it's more than just a good idea you do need the right sort of ship. You want a ship that is pretty manoeuvrable. The old Vulture was extremely manoeuvrable. I mean, that's the second most manoeuvrable ship in the game. Only the Eagle is uh, more so. But uh, the Chieftain is still yeah, quite the manoeuvrable uh, vessel, especially once you've um, modded the uh, thrusters. Not that it needs it. Alright, let's see what we have here. Oh, don't be a, don't tell me it's another seven. It fucking is. Right, I've got to use a shield cell bank at the moment. My shields, yeah, are non-existent. This could be uh, tricky because my shields are quite low. Here we go. We'll give it a shot. Alright, that was only the uh, berserker. Oh, uh, not berserker. Now the berserker has, so, right, we've got caustic damage, 
and low shields. I'm going to use the uh, shield tail bank again. But I didn't really give my shields the chance to recharge when um, I was in super cruise. So I need to try and get rid of these, this fucking thing. A bit sharpish. Alright, let's start one. There's no more regenerators, so we'll go after this berserker. But I am out of uh, shield cell uh, banks, so if my shields come down, which is very likely seeing as I'm up against seven of them again. Alright, that's that berserker down. Next berserker. A fair way out. Didn't lead to that. Shields are very low. I may actually have to run from this one. Right, so the rest now are all uh, standard marauders but my shields are practically offline, so I have to run. There's me saying about these being easy. Uh, yeah, when you've got enough of them ganging up on you, they're not so easy. Of course, I've still got corrosive damage, so what I need to do is stop pretty uh, quickly. That's it, get out of there. And sort out the old corrosive uh, damage. damage. <coughs> Caustic substance neutralized. So that is done. So how many did I take out? 640,000. Oh, fucking hell. It was so much easier when they paid 10,000. Uh, so that is uh, uh, 16 I've destroyed. So anyway, we'll head back to the uh, docking station. Because my shields, my shields are practically non-existent. And because I've got prismatic shields, it's going to take them a long old while to uh, recharge. Another reason why I would suggest, yeah, in a, in a scout ship, fit a standard uh, shield generator or prismatic. But there we go, that is uh, taking on scouts. So, yeah, for the most part, they are pretty easy. Um, just make sure you have a decontamination uh, limbic controller on you. And, uh, yeah, cargo racks to ensure that you can uh, carry the, uh, the necessary limpets. You also want to be sure that your ship is quite manoeuvrable and relatively fast. Sheer speed is not vital, but it's, it's certainly handy. And then you can pour everything else into uh, shields and armor. When you're going up against uh, scouts, armor is probably the, uh, the priority. Decent shields are certainly useful, but you do really want to make sure that you've got a decent amount of armor there with you. Once you've got that sorted out, um, yeah, they are quite straightforward until you get two <laughs> signal sources that have seven of them. And well, you saw how quickly they can strip down your shields. And that is definitely what has me thinking that uh, they've been given a buff. They used to be not that difficult even with seven of them but now th their shots are doing far more uh, uh, damage to your your, uh, your shields than they used to so um, 
I mean, like, you know, a couple of months ago, that would have been a seriously shit go. Only being able to take out 16 of them. But, uh... Well, to be honest, it was a seriously shit go. I can normally take out far more than 16 of them. But those uh, signal sources that have uh, seven of the uh, scouts in them are not that common. And yet here I am doing a video, so of course I have to run into fucking two of them. But that's it. That is uh, Thargoid Scouts. So uh, that's the easy Thargoid combat. But let's face it, when people think of Thargoid combat in Elite Dangerous, they don't think about taking on Thargoid Scouts, no. They are thinking about taking on Thargoid Interceptors, the big bastard things. So, um, how do you go about doing that then? Well, that's what's coming up right now. Thargoid Interceptors. Now, um, well, let's get a couple of things uh, out the way first. First thing is, um, yeah, these are the most difficult uh, ships you are going to take on in the game. And I'd say for the first half dozen or so attempts you are almost certainly going to be destroyed so if you are the kind of person who you know can't take losing your ship you may as well give up before you even start because they are going to destroy you um <clears throat> the second thing i say this in pretty much every video i do but never does it apply more than now. Um, I do not claim that my way is the only way, and that if you're doing it, you know, any other way, you're doing it wrong. Um, that's for cunts like Exigius uh, to say. <coughs> that's my way. Um, Although, I mean, I can explain how to uh, destroy uh, interceptors. I can only do it against one kind, uh, the Cyclops. Uh, I've never been able to take out a Basilisk, let alone uh, a Medusa or a Hydra. So, although I know how to do it, putting it into practice is another matter. Um... And, and again, that's something you need to to, to keep in keep in mind. <coughs> uh, well, let's start then by going through my uh, ship here. So when I'm taking on uh, interceptors, specifically uh, the uh, Cyclops, I am nearly always in my Corvette here, my AX Corvette. Um, and the first thing you may notice is down here, my maximum power output is 50.35 megawatts, but with the weapons deployed, I'm using 53.02 megawatts. So yeah, I'm 2.67 megawatts over the uh, maximum capacity of my uh, power plant. So yeah, this is a very power hungry ship and I'm having to use uh, power priorities. Can't really avoid it. So we'll go through um, this loadout just as we did with my anti uh, scout ship. So, starting with military grade composites, and what a surprise! It's grade 5 heavy duty armor with deep plating. Just as with uh, the anti scout ship, all of the uh, bulkheads and uh, hull reinforcement packages. All modified with uh, grade 5 heavy duty armor and deep plating uh, experimental and it's for exactly the same reason um, damage done is absolute so resistances are pointless you just need to keep piling on just 
raw shield and hull strength. Um, and believe me, you can certainly pile it on all right in uh, you know the larger ships. You don't need to use a corvette. Uh, there are experienced uh, players out there who yeah don't use anything like uh, this type of ship. So much so that I think there are videos out there of uh, experienced players taking out Thargoid Cyclops while they are in an Imperial Courier. I won't be doing that. Ever. <coughs> anyway, uh, right, so next, power plant, 8A, and yeah, what a surprise. Uh, overcharged uh, grade 5 with thermal spread. I could have um, used uh, the, the monstered uh, experimental, which would have made power management a bit easier. But I like to keep the temperatures, or yeah, the running temperatures down a bit, so yeah, thermal spread it is. Thrusters, yeah, big shock. Grade 5 dirty drive tuning with drag drives. Uh, phrase shift drive, which is far from important in this ship. But increased FSD range, grade 5, mass manager. Doesn't that surprise you? Uh, life support. Uh, reinforced to grade four is the highest I can do grade four. Uh, highest I can do reinforced life support. Uh, if you're going after interceptors, I highly recommend reinforcing your life support rather than doing lightweight. Uh, it's Thargoids do like um, targeting your life support and your uh, cockpit canopy, so you want your life support to be uh, as strong as possible. Power distributor, no surprise, uh, weapon focus grade 5, but I've got cluster capacitors on here. I should really uh, change that to uh, super conduits, but this ship is doing fine, so um, I'll leave it. Finally sensors, that is lightweight, um, there's no point fitting long range. Uh, because they never go too far away from you and there's no point putting wide angle because that's a ship modification so uh, yeah that's the uh, core internals optional internals these aren't going to surprise you too much um, firstly the shield generator is a class 7 but it's a standard shield generator it is not a um, prismatic there's a very good reason for that um, with this one, I have uh, grade 5 reinforced with high cap. <coughs> if I had a prismatic, I would have to fit the um, enhanced low power uh, modification with uh, low draw experimental. The result would be that with prismatic shields, my shields would actually be weaker than they are with this standard one. So it's a no-brainer. Um, if you've got the power uh, available to fit a prismatic, then yeah, by all means do, but I don't. Next is uh, a 128 capacity cargo rack. <coughs> now already some of you are probably thinking, well that seems a bit of a waste. Well, I need uh, cargo capacity for things like uh, you know, repair and decontamination limpets and seeing as things like hull and shield reinforcements only go up to class 5 um, there was a little point using this to put you know either a hull or shield reinforcement in there and having um, a smaller cargo rack further down so I just thought well fuck it fit this one here I'm no worse off so take advantage of the additional cargo capacity. I never come anywhere near, for, uh, you know, 128 uh, tons of capacity. Never mind the fact that I've also got a uh, corrosion resistant um, cargo rack, so I actually have 144 tons of uh, cargo. <coughs> but, you know, it's there should I need it. 78 shield cell bank, which uh, has specialised shield cell bank grade 4. It's also got the stripped down. I, I don't know why I've got that. I would like to have boss cells, but I think if I had that, 
Um, so I don't know if that adds additional power draw or not. If it doesn't, I may consider changing that. But yeah, at the moment, that's what I have. The first whole reinforcement package, it may be in a class 6 slot, but it is a class 5D because that is the best that you can get. And yeah, you know the drill when it comes to uh, the modifications on there. 6A auto field maintenance unit, which has not been modded because modding uh, AFM units is pointless. I think the only thing you can do to them is shield them. And, you know, they're not targeted by enemy ships, not even Thargoids, so it's, it's not really worth it. Next, then, is a Guardian module reinforcement package. Uh, can't mod it, so it's uh, just, you know, the standard. Then Guardian Hull Reinforcement Package, uh, which I put on for two reasons. Firstly, uh, I've got the caustic resistance, and secondly, and perhaps more truthfully, I couldn't be bothered to uh, mod any more <laughs> regular hull reinforcements, so I stuck that one on there. Then we do have two regular uh, Class 5 hull reinforcements in the two military compartments. Again, both modded with the usual. Then we have uh, our four, uh, class four rather, corrosion resistant uh, cargo rack. Then we have a class four guardian hull reinforcement package, so yeah, I've got two of those. Then a class three repair Olympic controller, and a class one decontamination Olympic controller. Neither of which have been modded. I don't think you can mod them. <coughs> Now, as far as utility mounts go, no big surprises here. So, uh, we've got the heatsink launcher here, which again has the ammo capacity increased. We also have the Xeno scanner, because if you know you thought they were important against scouts, they're even more important against uh, the interceptors. You can also use it to scan interceptors and get some uh, encoded materials from them, uh, unless, like me, you're maxed out on all of them. So I can't get any more. Uh, the other thing is this, the shutdown field neutralizer. Experienced players will say that you don't really need it. Um, but if you're watching this, then the chances are you are not an experienced player. In which case, you will absolutely need this. Um, because, well, it does exactly... <laughs> what it says in the name there. Uh, Thargoid interceptors will emit an electromagnetic pulse that completely shuts down your ship. You cannot move, you cannot fire, you cannot do anything. Um, so in that time, you are a sitting duck. This will uh, counteract that. Very useful indeed. And then finally there are five shield boosters and oh, what a surprise. Grade 5 Heavy Duty Shield uh, Booster mod with Super Capacitors and that's what all five of them have. And the net result of all that uh, you know, shield, shield boosters, armour, whole reinforcement packages and modding to everything is that I have shield health of 5055. Yeah, if I had a prismatic with the uh, modifications that I had to have um, in order to be able to power it I had 4,800 and something which is hardly a low amount but you know a cheaper shield which charges up faster and gives me better shield health it wasn't the most difficult of uh, decisions I've had to make <coughs> all that and then armor health 4,952 with 9.8% uh, caustic resistance which does come in very handy. So go back to outfitting so we can cover the uh, weapons. So two class 4 beam lasers which are gimbaled and both have grade 5 efficient weapon with thermal vent. Now against Thargoid interceptors the vast majority of the time, these have no effect whatsoever. I've got them there for two reasons. Firstly, I can use them to uh, call my ship down. It's rare that I need to, but the option's there. 
And secondly, uh, Thargoid Interceptors will occasionally raise their shields. Uh, they do it after you've destroyed each uh, heart. Then you can use um, like regular weapons to uh, take those shields down. That's the only time beam lasers will have any effect. As soon as the shields are down, you can carry on firing and uh, it doesn't take any damage at all. Next is a class 2 remote release flak launcher, which is in a class 3 slot because it's the only place I could put it. Um, this is used to attack the Thargon swarm. Uh, right, well even though I haven't shown it yet, I, I can let you know now. When I am taking on uh, the Cyclops variant uh, Thargoid Interceptor, I completely ignore the Thargon swarm. You can get away with that with uh, the Cyclops, but you will not get away with that with any of the other three. So you are going to need one of these if you're looking at, uh, you know, going after a Basilisk or better. So yep, yeah, that is there. Now, the next four are all uh, Guardian weapons. You can only fit four Guardian weapons. Or you can fit four... AX weapons, or a combination of the two, but you cannot have more than four of them. For some reason the remote release flak launcher is not included among that, despite the fact that it is actually an AX weapon. So I have two Class 2 Guardian Gauss Cannons and two Class 1 Guardian Gauss Cannons. Um, now I have these because I like the precision that they give me. But they don't do as much damage as a Class 3 uh, Guardian Shard Cannon. Uh, I have another AX Corvette, which has two Class 3 uh, Guardian Shard Cannons in the Class 4 uh, hard points here. <coughs> um, Guardian Gauss Cannons give off an enormous amount of heat. So you've got to be careful how you use them. Um, I have the two class 2s in one uh, fire group and the two class 1s in another. Don't really want to be firing all four of them at the same time very often. In fact, I, I, I never fire them all at the same time. Um, <coughs> these are the only Guardian weapons that have this sort of heat problems. Although, I mean, there are the Guardian plasma chargers, which I don't use. I don't know anybody who does use them. There are players out there who think that they are great weapons and swear by them. I can't get on with them. But that's not to say, you know, don't bother with them. They're just not for me. They don't suit my style. So that is the loadout. I also have uh, brought some uh, limpets. I've got 75. You really shouldn't need anything like 75. I rarely need more than 12 after taking on any uh, uh, interceptors. But um, mm, I have a habit of forgetting to uh, <laughs> uh, stock up on limpets. So I've just grabbed a, a whole load of them. Uh, that way I can be sure that, you know, for at least four or five uh, interceptors, yeah, I've got enough limpets there. Uh, I don't take on uh, more than one interceptor before I return to the uh, uh, docking station because I do take damage. And, um, yeah, if you're taking them on, you are going to be taking damage, believe me. So I don't panic because you're taking hits and, and your your hull's going down, it's going to happen. You cannot avoid it. There is no way you're going to, you know, take on a Thargoid Interceptor and get out of there with your hull still at 100%. Yes, there are videos on YouTube of players who do that, but they are far better at taking on uh, Thargoids than I am, and if you are new to the game, they are going to be far better at taking on Thargoids than you are. There is no getting away from it. So what we'll do, uh, I'm going to do a uh, jump cut here, but we will launch. Um, and yeah, we'll check out the uh, signal sources and see what we can find.
Right, so just as with before, we are using uh, the FSS to uh, give us an idea of what's out here. These are all too far away. Right, how's this? And what we're looking for is a threat nine. There's no way I'm going there. What we're looking for are threat fives. There's one right there. Now, threat fives can sometimes contain scouts, but uh, if there is going to be an interceptor, it will be a Cyclops variant, and it's only the Cyclops that I'm after, because they're the only ones I can take on. So I'll get the uh, power uh, distributor sorted out. Now, kill your speed before you go in, because if it is an interceptor, you don't want to be flying into it. So there it is. Let's see what else is here. Three occupied escape pods would be handy. Anyway, he's seen us. He's coming over to scan us. So we deploy hard points, and once he's in range, which is 500 meters, we'll give him a, a scan. Xeno scan is very slow to scan, but it will do it before he goes. Right, so he didn't have any, uh, <coughs> yeah, he didn't have any encodings anyway, but there we go, right, let's let him know we, were, uh, we need business. So a few hits, and instantly you see this one here is now glowing particularly bright. That is the exposed heart, and this is what we now need to uh, attack. Can actually it. There we go. So that has now been broken off. This is where his uh, shields will come up. Now, Thargoid Interceptor attacks are very predictable. So he's now using yeah, his uh, lightning attack, which affects shields and affects systems. So you want to try and avoid it as much as you can, but it is not the end of the world. I'm going to use uh, a shield cell bank there with a heat sink to uh, try and counter it. So his shields are down, so we're back to using the uh, Gauss cannons, and the next heart is exposed. The incoming missile is just a standard one, don't need to worry about it. few hits, haven't destroyed yet, don't worry about the uh, lightning attack this time, can't see you very well, I mean, when you're firing from the rear, there's a lot of distortion behind him, which makes it very difficult to aim, right, so we've taken too long, and the heart is no longer exposed, so we've got to damage him again, there we go, and now the uh, heart is exposed again. So we'll start again with trying to uh, take this one out. There we go, so that heart is down. Now he will uh, fire a uh, caustic missile at us. The shields are back up, so we'll, uh, there we go, here comes the uh, caustic missile. That's hit us, so we're now taking caustic damage. We'll continue trying to take his shields down. There you go, his shields are down. Now, to get rid of the caustic damage, use a shield cell bank, but not a heat sink. And then fire a couple more blasts of the Gauss rifle. Caustic substance has been burnt off, so now we use the uh, shield cell bank to cool us down. Continue attacking him. Yeah, the next heart is exposed there, so again, start firing on that. There we go, that is down. This time it will launch the electromagnetic uh, magnetic pulse to try and shut us down. There we go. Right, so, hold down the uh, field neutraliser. There we go, the pulse is gone, so we can now release it. The uh, 
caustic uh, missile that he fired is also uh, giving us caustic damage again. Wait till his shields are down and we we'll use uh, the same trick as before. Use, there we go. So, shield cell bank but no heat sink. A couple of blasts from the uh, gas rifles, we've overheated, burnt off the uh, caustic damage. The next heart is exposed so we can start attacking that. His damage yeah, is now down to 20%. That is the last heart. He will fire another um, caustic missile but not right away. So we can take out the shield. Here comes the incoming uh, caustic missile. Right, shields are down, and it now it can't heal itself. It's uh, too badly damaged. So we'll uh, do another reheat, or overheating job. There you go. Right, so cool down and give him a couple more blasts. He's down to four percent, down to zero. That's him dead. Uh, he releases a huge toxic cloud. We target the thyroid heart, which he has dropped. And once we are four kilometers away from it, because that is right at the center of that uh, explosive, yeah, the explosion that we just saw there. Once we're four kilometers away, that's it. The toxic cloud doesn't come out as far as four kilometers. There you go. Wasn't that easy? <laughs> um, believe it or not, yes, it, it, it is easy once you've had a few, so, you know, practice goes at it. It certainly helps that uh, the Thargoid uh, attacks are very predictable. Now we need to do some repairs. My AFM unit is currently offline because, yeah, I'm using the... Uh, Power priorities. I also need to repair the hull. So let's get that underway and also get uh, the repairs underway. I'll leave the shield generator because my shields are in relatively good stead. I still have one shield cell bank charge left, and I've still got one heat sink left, which is pretty good. Now you saw when uh, he was destroyed there that uh, it pays two million. But uh, actually it has been uh, rebalanced, and destroying one Cyclops pays eight million. Which ain't bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, you do have quite a few... Uh, Internal repairs. Most of these internal repairs that I need to do with the AFN unit are actually a result of me doing that uh, overheating. It's all self-inflicted. But uh, I, I overheat to burn off that caustic damage that I was uh, getting. If you try and use a uh, decontamination limpet while uh, you're engaging a Thargoid of any kind, whether it's uh, a Scout or an Interceptor, they will target it and they'll destroy it straight away. So you're wasting your time, but you do still need to get rid of that caustic damage. So burn it off by deliberately overheating. And as soon as it's burnt off, you can then use a, uh, a heat sink and um, Cool yourself down again so that the amount of internal damage you take as a result of overheating is kept to a minimum. So, as you can see, I've got quite a few internal uh, repairs to do, as well as the hull. 
which is currently now at 71 percent so we'll do a jump cut here and uh yeah i'll get these repairs done okay so all of my internal modules apart from the afm unit have been repaired AFM unit can't repair itself because it has to shut down the uh, module that's being repaired. Well, if the AFM unit is shut down, it can't do anything then, obviously. So, um, yeah. Also, yeah, two of those escaped uh, or occupied escape pods managed to survive that uh, encounter. So I grabbed them. Duh. And I grabbed that as well. I didn't get the uh, Thargoid Heart. It is fairly valuable, but it's also illegal in just about every jurisdiction going. Um, so you have to sell it really at a fleet carrier. Uh, and also, well, I've got no problem with it because I have corrosion resistant uh, cargo racks, but yeah, it is toxic. You will take damage if you haven't got corrosive, uh, corrosion resistant uh, cargo racks. And it does quite a bit of damage as well. So, a lot of times it's just not worth bothering with. Now, with the recent changes to uh, the amount you get paid in combat bonds uh, per Cyclops, like 8 million for, for one, there is a chain of thought which, although I don't do it, um, yeah, it is quite compulsive, the argument uh, uh, in favour of it, which is that, you know, you're getting paid 8 million, your repair costs are not likely to be, you know, <laughs> they're certainly not going to take all of that away, so you could forego the auto field maintenance unit and the uh, repair limit controller you may even consider risking foregoing the decontamination limit controller and putting in additional shield and hull reinforcements now, like I say I'm not convinced about it even though, let's say, the, the argument is, is quite a strong one. Um, I don't know what it is. I prefer to be able to do my repairs and what have you on the fly. Uh, you know, if my shields were in better condition, I, I may have even considered uh, going after another interceptor. Except no, I wouldn't because my uh, shield cell banks and my heat sinks are far too low. Well, I could always synthesize more heat sinks, but yeah, shield cell banks aren't good enough. So yeah, if you are struggling uh, against an interceptor, but you're getting close, you may want to think about um, yeah, certainly replacing the AFM unit, if you've got one, with additional, I would say, hull reinforcements. Uh, especially as it would be a grade 5 here. I wouldn't go so far as to uh, get rid of the decontamination limpid controller. But, I mean, the repair one, again, you could replace that. Class 3, so you could put, I don't know, probably a shield reinforcement there. And, um, yeah, that could well help. It's also tempting Successful. for new players to try synthesizing Guardian Gauss Cannon munitions and going for like the premium to give you uh, a bonus of 30% damage. I would advise against that though because I'm not entirely sure it will have any benefit. You've already seen me uh, take out one. I'm going to take out a second so as to, you know, try and make it a little bit clearer. I'm not great at explaining things as I'm playing the game, but hopefully if I do it twice, I won't have missed anything or, or nothing vitally important. 
But you may have noticed that at no time at all did I ever refer to uh, the uh, damage that I was being inflicted, that I wasn't really looking at how, how much damage, uh, you know, the percentage of hull remaining on the Thargoid. Because Thargoid interceptor combat doesn't really work like that. The only time sheer damage uh, makes or has any real relevance, as far as I can see, is when you're shooting the, the, the central part of it in order to make the uh, the heart uh, become exposed. But once the heart's exposed, it's not the amount of damage you do to it, it's just the precision actually being, out, being able to hit it. One hit in the right place will destroy it. So, synthesizing ammo that has, you know, plus 30% damage, certainly against Cyclops anyway, it's it just doesn't seem to be worth doing. Now, it could be that if you're going up against, like, you know, a, a Basilisk or, you know, if you're really mad, a Medusa or a Hydra, um, the bonus damage then might make some difference. To be perfectly honest, I don't know. I've only tried taking on Basilisks about four or five times, and I've fucked it up every time. The best I've ever done was when I was in a wing with uh, Jimbo76. And uh, we took out one heart and exposed the second one. And that was it. <laughs> that is the best I've done. So, yeah. The Basilisk is so much more difficult than uh, the Cyclops. And that's why I haven't even considered trying a, a Medusa or a, uh, a Hydra. Um, I suspect if I am going to take on a Basilisk... I probably need to do it in a wing of four. Uh, every time I've asked, oh yeah, let's get a, a wing of four together, and I've asked people on YouTube if they want to uh, come along. I often get like one or two people saying, yeah, I'll do it, and then I never hear anything about it again, so I'm not even going to waste my time asking this time. Uh, if it happens, it happens, but I'm not trying to arrange it. So, we're almost back up to 100% uh, hull. I have a feeling this uh, repair limpet is going to run out though before we do. So I am going to need one more. There you go. For once my powers of prediction were correct. So that means I've used 10 uh, limpets to uh, repair my ship. Well, my hole was, I think it was at 63, wasn't it? So it wasn't, it wasn't brilliant. It's been far worse. The first time I succeeded in taking out uh, a Cyclops, my hole was on something like 7%. Um, and of course then, the uh, payout for a Cyclops was 2 million. Uh, believe me, the, uh, the feeling of satisfaction you get the first time you take out a Cyclops is immense. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you really do feel like you've done something in the game. So, uh, right, well, I'm going to do another jump cut here um, while I uh, go in and uh, cash in me... Uh, Combat bonds and everything else. Resupply my heat sink launchers and my shield cell banks. And we'll be back when uh, we're back looking for another uh, class 5 signal. And um, yeah, getting ready to take on the, the next one. survives, I'll uh, take a look. Alright, so he's finished scanning me. I 
you finish scanning in. There we go. Unable to receive data because I haven't got any room for her anymore. Right, here we go. So he says felt that. Right, passing away, and there's the first heart exposed, so now we want to target that. If this quotes, it's a bit difficult, but be that precise. Uh, get out of fucking way, you can. Come up. There they are, these guys. He will now have to use his own fighting attack on us. Uh, trying to boost away from him. Failing, so I'm going to use the shield cell bank and the uh, heat sink to try and counter the uh, shield drain. Don't worry about uh, the oxygen completed thing. That's fine. Right, his shield is down. We can now go back to uh, attacking him with the gas cannons. There we go, the next part is exposed there. So, let's try and aim at this fucker. There we go, right, that part is down. Now he will launch his uh, corrosive missile. I should have said incoming corrosive missile, you can clearly see it is one. There you go. So we've got the uh, corrosive damage that we're taking. Continue uh, trying to take out or take down his shields. There you go, shields are down. So, shield cell bank, no heat seat. Couple of shots with the gas cannons, caustic substance neutralised. So now we use the heat sink to uh, cool down, and we'll start blasting away again. Get the next heart exposed. There it is. destroyed the heart, I didn't even know. Right, so energy surge. Okay, his pulse is finished, so we can uh, go back to uh, taking out his shields. I didn't even see that heart come down. <laughs> right, I'm going to try and counter that with a short cell bank with heat sink. Shield cell bank. Get the heat up. There we go. Right now, use the uh, shield cell. Uh, use the uh, heat sink. Counter the heat. So that's burnt off the uh, caustic uh, damage I was taking there. Now out of range. Notice I'm just completely ignoring the Thargon swarm. Against uh, uh, a Cyclops, you really don't need to worry about it. But this is the only time you can get away with that. If you try that against either a, well, a Basilisk or anything else, yeah, you will be made to regret it. Oh, I thought that was it. I thought I'd taken out the heart, but no. And now the heart is no longer exposed. It is again now. Far quicker to do it now because... Uh, yeah, he's in a badly damaged state, so he hasn't got much in the way of like armor or anything. There 
we go, so that's the last half down. So again, yep, the shields are back up, so now we use conventional weapons, take out the shields, another incoming caustic missile, this is the last one. Looks like I'm taking more damage than uh, usual this time. We're into the 50s, still five of them were really anywhere near getting destroyed. Looks like it's out of range now. Now we don't need to worry about aiming at hearts. Uh, and there he goes. And bang. Alright, so target the uh, side of the heart, make sure we know we're far enough away. Also, uh, well, now that he's down, I can use a decontamination limb. So we're not quite far enough back yet. Now we are. There we go, so that one was much closer. But uh, nevertheless, uh, still successful. I can't remember the last time I failed to uh, take out a Cyclops. I take them out every single time now, which is fine. So we're off back to uh, doing the old repairs. So uh, I will uh, yeah, do a jump cut here and uh, we'll be back when the... Uh, Repairs are oh, sorted out. Alright, well, uh, all of my internal repairs have been done. I'm still repairing the hole, but uh, I thought I would uh, also quickly show you something else. If you do manage to take out a, uh, a Thargoid interceptor and you see this, and you're thinking, hmm, that could be something pretty handy, or valuable or useful or worth investigating um no it's just a visual glitch <laughs> it's, it's not meant to be there uh i have no idea what it is why it does it or anything but uh yeah it has it doesn't affect the payout it's still eight million yeah none of the uh uh, wreckage and salvage uh, items there could be uh, picked up, they all disappeared. Thargoid Heart is there but I'm not going to uh, pick that up. If my carrier was nearby I would, but my carrier is currently in Imperial Space, it's about 300 and something light years away, so no, I'm not going to do that. Alright, um, yeah. Just thought I'd quickly add that bit. Uh, I'll be back when we are about to dock at the station. Alright, well, we are back at the old docking station. Repairs done, the hold back up to 100%, which took fucking long enough. I used sort of 14 or 15 uh, repair limpets. That's as smooth as an entrance as I get in this ship. And even though that uh, Actually, neither of those um, battles with uh, interceptors 
were anything like my best, but I still got through them with no trouble at all. So a few residual uh, repairs to do, which cost 1767 so yeah, restocking ammunition cost more than that, 11,508. But uh, we can now hand in 8 million in combat bonds. So that brings the balance up to 12,235,536,386 credits. Not bad. Especially when you consider I gave away two and a half billion credits uh, about a month ago. But that's uh, Sargoid Combat. So, Scouts, pretty easy. Um, providing you bring decontamination limpets with you, you should be fine. You don't need to worry about uh, you know, AX weaponry or Guardian weaponry. Any weapons, uh, you know, will uh, have an effect on them. Uh, interceptors, um, let's say, they are tough, there's no getting around it. The only interceptor I've been able to uh, destroy is a Cyclops. Okay, I can take them out every single time, but yeah, that is it. The uh, difficulty really does shoot up when you try taking on uh, a Basilisk. Um, but the secret of taking on the Cyclops is the fact that their attacks are entirely predictable. Um, once you've taken out the first uh, heart, uh, it will use its lightning attack on you. Once you take out the second, it will fire a uh, corrosive missile. Take out the third, it will use the uh, electromagnetic shutdown pulse. Take out the fourth, it fires another uh, corrosive missile. The fourth is the uh, final heart, and then you destroy the thing. A description like that makes it sound like it's easy. Um, it isn't, as I kind of demonstrated really, because, yeah, like I say, I can take them out every time, but neither of those two attacks were particularly smooth. I, I uh, fucked up, especially in that second one. Uh, at least a couple of times. So, uh, yeah, can't entirely take it for granted. Uh, and like I say, the first half dozen or so times that you try taking one on, you will almost certainly be destroyed. So if you're paranoid about losing your ship, then don't waste your time trying to uh, uh, attack Thargoid Interceptors, because you are most certainly going to be destroyed the first few times. You don't really have much chance to uh, practice taking them on uh, without actually just jumping straight in at the deep end and, and doing it. So, yeah. Make sure you've got a decent ship. Make sure you have, you know, extremely strong shields and armor, or as strong as you possibly can. Uh, make sure you've got, you know, decent weapons. Uh, I personally would not recommend wasting your time using AX weapons. I think they're fucking useless. Uh, the um, advanced versions of the multi-cannons and the uh, missile launchers are even worse. So, yeah, I would get some... Uh, Guardian weapons before you look to uh, take on interceptors. I'm not a big fan of the Guardian plasma charger, but like I say, uh, that doesn't mean they are absolute shite. There are players out there who swear by them and think they're great. They just don't suit my style. I, well, as you see, my first choice is the Guardian Gauss uh, cannons. Or Gauss launchers, whatever they're fucking called, uh, which are basically the Guardian equivalent of uh, uh, rail guns. So they do have a, a, a charge period of uh, you know a second or two, but just keep that in mind when you're using them. <coughs> uh, my second choice would be the uh, Guardian shard cannons. Ideally, 
you'd have a combination of the two. Two uh, Guardian Gauss uh, launches to... Uh, you know, when you need the precision, when you're trying to take away uh, the uh, Thargoy Hearts. And the uh, Shard Cannons for just blasting away sheer damage at the central uh, part of the Thargoid ship in order to get the hearts exposed. Um, the Shard Cannons are basically Guardian equivalents of uh, Fragmentation Cannons, which means that you need to be fairly close to them in order to do the most damage. Um, ideally, you need to be about 500 metres away from it. Uh, once you get to about one kilometre away, uh, the spread of the, the shards is so wide, you have no accuracy at all, and a lot of the uh, fire is going to miss. If you're firing from, say, over one and a half kilometres, then you are basically doing nothing but wasting ammunition. So, you know, one and a half kilometres out, don't waste your time using... Uh, your uh, shark cannons. You've got to get in closer. But that is it. That is my guide to uh, yeah, Thargoid uh, combat. I do not claim that my method is the best. I do not even claim that my method is good. Um, like I say, it only works against Cyclops. Um, I ignore the Thargon Swarm completely, you are not going to get away with that against any other Cyclops, uh, any other uh, Interceptor, it will only work against the Cyclops, uh, you know, try doing it against uh, any of the other three, you're not going to last very long. Um, and also, my method of uh, destroying the uh, Cyclops shields with my beam lasers, you're probably not even going to get away with that uh, against uh, a basilisk or higher. Uh, your best bet is to boost away um, and use that time while you are effectively running, though only temporarily, and try to do some sort of on-the-fly repairs. Uh, interceptor shields do come down by themselves. You don't have to destroy them, but Obviously, destroying them brings them down a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, while their shields are up, uh, I don't think they can use their uh, lightning attack. Don't quote me on that, but I don't think they can. They can use everything else, but uh, yeah, not that. So there you go. It's, it's very much a, a starting block. Um, it's basically showing you how to take them out and letting you, letting you know the process involved. But, uh, yeah, I don't claim to be, you know, a great expert on uh, Thargoid combat. I don't even claim to be any good. Um, but, yeah, that will do. That is this guide done. I have no idea what the next guide will be, but I'm sure there will be one. I bet you all can't wait for that, eh? In the meantime, go away.